Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a hyper casual game in Unity and welcome to episode 2. In this tutorial we're going to add a little bit more colour to our game using materials and we're also going to start dealing with some physics. Don't forget click on subscribe button and click that bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So I mentioned the word physics in that little intro there, and I think a lot of people always deem something like physics and uh, coding quite difficult when it comes to development. But in actual fact, I don't think it is. I think it's more kind of understanding the basics and working from there. So we'll deal with physics in the second half of this tutorial. Firstly, let's get some colour in here with materials. So what is a material? A material is a way of allowing an object, whether it's a sphere, whether it's a cube, or whether it's an actual model, to uh, basically show what it can look like. It basically gives it colour, image, that kind of thing. So to do it, let's go to our asset window down here, make sure we are in the assets up here. You can tell we're in the top level of the folder because we see the scenes folder right here. Right click, create, and click on folder. Let's call this materials. And inside this folder, we can then create another asset, which is going to be that material itself. So right click, create, and let's go down about a third of the way down the list to material. And let's call this anything we want, but let's make it relative to what we're creating here. I'm going to create a red material. So let's just call this red mat. Obviously mat short for material. Hit return and you'll see Basically what we have here is this white and grey sphere image pretty much reflected on this material. That's the default colour. We want to change it to red. So over here where it says albedo, let's select this little white box here and we can then change it to whatever colour we want. So in this case let's change it to red. So let's bring it all the way up here. You'll notice that we have the RGB 255. 0, 0, and also A, which stands for Alpha. What is Alpha? Alpha allows an object to be either translucent, transparent, or opaque. Set to 255, it is opaque. Set at 0, it is completely transparent. And anything else in between is translucent, meaning we can kind of see through it, but we can still see the colour applied to it. And we have the hex number down here in case you need it. So for now, I'm going to keep the alpha as 255 and keep the red as 255 and everything else as zero. So it is a nice red colour. So I'm going to click X. A couple of other options we'll go through, but firstly, let's actually make this sphere red. Now we can either drag and drop this material onto the object in the scene or into the hierarchy. So if we go onto the hierarchy first, it changes to red. Let's hold control, press Z to undo. The benefit of applying it to your scene instead allows you to see real time what it could look like before you let go of that mouse, uh, the left mouse button. So let's let go and it's red. Brilliant, fantastic. So a couple of other options to go through here in the inspector panel for the material. We can change the metallic and we'll see it change real time. Now it's applied to an object. So we can change the metallic and smoothness. Awesome. So when it's set quite high, we can see it is kind of reflective in some manner. So this background that we see here, this is known as a skybox, which we'll go uh, into in the next tutorial. But for now, we can see that it is kind of reflecting because we can see the reflection of the horizon just here. So it is a little bit reflective in that manner. And we can change the source to albedo. It's not going to matter too much at this point. The only real time that something like that becomes relevant is when we apply an actual texture to it. Now we don't have a texture to apply to this, at least not yet, but that would go into the albedo up here. Um, so that basically means that we don't have any real use for something like the normal map, the height map. We don't need that at the moment because there's no reason for us to create a 3D looking image. And what I mean by that is because if we apply a normal map or a height map, the image here doesn't look so flat. Or rather, the texture on it won't look so flat. It'll make it look a little bit bumpy depending on how tense the normal map or height map is, which means that light bouncing off it gives it more of a 3D effect rather than the flat effect that we have here. 
So that same principle also applies for the tiling. Because we don't have a texture on there, there's no reason for us to tile anything, simply because, well, there's nothing to tile. It's all red. So if you make a mistake and need to revert it back to the beginning and start again, you click this little cog up here, and then you can click on Reset, and it'll set it back to its original form. So what I want to do is change it back to red, and I'm going to have the metallic as full and smoothness as uh, zero. And remember when I said about the alpha? Well, if we change this real time, we can see that the actual sphere itself changes color real time. However, if we change the alpha, nothing happens. Reason for that is because we need to set the rendering mode to fade. Now, it's up to you whether you do that or not. Um, but just to give you a quick demonstration of that, let me move this color palette over here. We can see that the alpha is 255, but if we reduce it, we can see it starting to fade quite a lot. And if we go to zero, it's not even visible. So I'm going to keep it as 255. And obviously you can have it set as whatever you want. This is your game after all. So I'm going to set the rendering mode back to opaque. And I'm going to keep my smoothness at zero, my metallic as full. Uh, should I set it to albedo? No, I think I think I'll stick with. In fact, let me see what it looks like with. Hmm. Okay, I th I think I'm gonna have it a nice bright red like that. Okay, so I'm I'm happy with that material. So what happens now? Well, let's look at creating different colors and how quickly and easily we can do it. So if we go into our material down here, hold Control and press D, we can duplicate that material. Now, if we want to change this to a blue color, we can just select the albedo up here and change it to blue. Awesome. Always be careful, though, because if you've still got that old material selected, you can accidentally change it. And you can see here that it's changed in the scene, which isn't what we wanted. So let's undo that. So now we have this material set as blue. Let's press F2 to rename and let's call it blue matte. And let's do one more for green, nice and quick. Hold control, press D, F2, rename, green, matte. And then let's change the color to green. So now we have three different colored materials. So what can we do? Let's have three different spheres in our scene. Well, rather than create a new sphere, let's apply that same methodology we just used to duplicate these materials to duplicating game objects. So let's click our sphere. Let's hold control, press D. And you'll see we now have two, but it doesn't look like there's two in the scene. That's because both of these objects are in the exact same position within our level or scene or floor, whatever you want to call it, depending on what game you play, I guess. So let's hold control and let's bring this arrow up. Remember, we held control because we snapped it last tutorial so we can snap it up. And now we can see two. So let's apply that blue material to the second sphere. Let's do the same again. Hold control, press D, and let's add that to the green. Awesome. Now you'll notice that we actually have three spheres. However, it looks like we only have two. Where's the blue one gone? Well, again, the blue one is there. It is just in the exact same position as the green one. So let's move the green one up. Now we can see the green one here. We see all three, but we can only see these two here. That's because the green one is now out of the rendering window that it can see. So let's move that camera backwards in our scene. Now we can see all three. So before we move on to physics, let's do one more thing with the hierarchy. Let's rename some objects. So let's click on this first sphere. We can see here that is the red one selected. So let's have this as red orb. Let's have this one as blue orb and all I've done there is just press F2. Alternatively, you can right click and rename if you want to. Green orb. Now we have three different colored orbs. Brilliant. So we've got a little bit of knowledge about materials now and you can obviously go a lot further with materials depending on what you want to do. You can add textures and we probably will at some point. But for now, we've got some color to our game. We've got it looking a little bit more like something rather than just a blank, open, empty space. So if we press play now, this game view becomes active, but nothing is actually happening. If this were, if they were floating, for example, you'd expect them to fall. Gravity would be applied. 
but we don't have any physics applied to these objects right now. So let's actually put a bit of a test in order. Let's move these up out of view of our camera and let's watch them fall one by one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pan my camera around, zoom back and roughly look at what my camera is able to see. So that's what the camera is looking at right now. So what I'm going to do is I am going to move the blue sphere across and up out of view of the camera right there. I'm going to move the green one up to probably quite high, even out of view of the scene, so that's up there. And now I'm going to move the red one across a little bit and then up between the two. So again, we won't see anything if we press play. So how do we get these to actually fall? Well, it's quite simple. Let's start with our blue orb, simply because that is the one closest to the bottom of uh, the section where our camera should be able to see. So make sure you have blue orb selected. Go over here to your inspector panel and click on add component. And in here, you'll be able to find a little menu of multiple different things. And if we go to physics, and you'll see something called rigid body. And if you can't find it, all you can do at the top is type RIG and you'll find rigid body. Let's click on that. So you'll see this little component down here. Now, gravity will be applied to this. Now, we don't need to do anything else realistically to see this happen. But if we press play, we should be able to see this blue sphere orb now fall. So something has happened. So let's try and apply gravity to the other two objects. Now the good thing is we don't need to do it one by one. We can select both of those objects by holding control and clicking on the other and you can see both of them are now selected. So if we click add component and click rigid body again, we can see both of those objects had the rigid body applied at the same time. So what's going to happen in this game view now when we press play? Well, we should see the blue one fall, then we'll see the red one fall, then we'll see the green one fall. So let's just check that works. Awesome. So we've now just applied simple physics to some objects in Unity. I remember earlier when I said something like physics and coding seems daunting in game development. It really isn't because with just a few clicks, we've now applied gravity. Now we can work with a couple of different ways of playing around with this. Uh, you can increase the mass, you can increase the drag. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to affect it in ways you would expect to. Um, but some of these we are going to deal with a little bit later on, um, especially when we deal with how we're going to catch these orbs. Uh, but for now, the simplistic way we have gravity applied is enough. It might be worth playing around with some of these things just to see what you can come up with, what kind of physics you can create here. For example, all we've done there is increase the drag. And you can see because the, I think it was the yellow orb, was it? Uh, not the yellow, the green orb hit it, you can see that it's spinning around now, basically because it's been struck by another object. So if we were to increase the, oh, sorry, decrease the mass to uh, the drag, sorry, to one, we should be able to see that it falls a little bit slower. Now the reason that simply happens is because we've added that drag. If we were to, let's say, I'll tell you what, let's have all three of these in a row. So I'm gonna have this one out there. Let's have the red one out there. And the green one can be on level there. Now, these three should fall at the exact same pace which they do. So let's try and make this so as the green one falls first, then the blue one, then the red one. So theoretically, what we could do is play around with that drag. So if we leave the green drag as zero, that will fall the fastest. If we were to select the blue and have this as, let's say, two, and then select the red and have this as, say, four, it would mean that there is no drag on the green, there is a little drag on the blue and there is more drag on the red. So the order in which these should fall here should be green, blue, red. Let's try that out. Green, blue, red. 
So you can see how, uh, I'm hoping you guys should be able to see how this could be relevant in a couple of different ways. For example, something like the drag that we've applied to the red one could be used for a balloon or something because it comes down a little bit slower. So maybe worth playing around with a lot of these. So I'm going to set all of these back to zero. But what we're going to do is I'm going to select all three by holding the shift key and pressing them. And you'll see the drag has a little line through it. That denotes that not every component on these three objects is the same number. However, if we set it to zero, it will set all three as zero. And then you'll be left with the same result that we had before, where they all fall the exact same pace. Okay, so I'm going to save my scene. Hold control, press S, or go to file and save. It's up to you. So next tutorial, what we're going to deal with is we are going to deal a little bit more with physics. Um, so we're going to have like the balls being caught, I guess, on another object. And we'll also start looking, exploring the lighting a bit more, as well as the skybox. So until next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.